kind of a rainy day here at the Red Fort in Delhi, India, but not too rainy to talk about how we got to where we are. Um, before the internet, and you know, I use that sort of loosely, the internet, it's not exactly that the internet caused everything to happen, but it's, that was a pretty good marker. Before the internet, computers really were very scientific in their orientation. And the paradigm, the kind of idea that ruled in that time, is exemplified by a phrase that we used to use all the time <laughs> called RTFM, which is read the blank manual. You can fill in the F for yourself. And the idea there was the programmers created the programs that computers ran on. And if you needed to know how to use those programs, well, you had to read the book. And literally, programs came with the book. That's hard to really imagine right now that before you could even begin to use a program, you'd have to actually read through an entire book, the manual, and figure out how that, computer, how that programmed worked. And all, com all commands were issued to programs, all the things that they did, they did because you typed in text phrases, very, very sophisticated and kind of arcane syntax, very specific words with specific meanings. And you almost had to be a programmer to understand how to make a computer work. That was before the internet came along. The internet and its sort of change of mindset, which is a really drastic change of mindset from an expert framework where the experts figure out how everything's going on and you, the mere mortal, have to figure out what the experts came up with in order to use it. It really turned completely around and became an anti-expert medium where the entire medium was focused on the user, on the person who uh, confronts the computer with almost no knowledge and a good program and a good system is one where you really don't have to start with any knowledge in order to use it. So I want to focus on three people that exemplify to me the transition from the old world, the old expert world, to the new user-centered world. And all three of them come from a very interesting tradition. Um, there's, there's a reference if you want to see more about this tradition in the, uh, uh, in the, uh, on the page that you're looking at now, but um, they come from a sort of a strange hybrid between high-tech people and hippies. High-tech people being the ones who know how to make the machines run, the ones who know how to make things happen on the internet. And hippies, as you probably know, people with love beads and uh, kind of an anti-establishment attitude. And it was that anti-establishment attitude added to a sort of a high-tech genius that really, to my mind, made that transition possible from the old world of the expert to the new world. So three individuals that really exemplify that transition. And the first is Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs had a philosophy, and to the day he died, had the philosophy that computing should be beautiful, that computing should be uh, sensitive to the people who are using it, that computer devices should be well-designed and ergonomic, they should be simple, they should be intuitive. That ethic, more than anything else, I think, has driven this, this changeover from computers as machines with, uh, you know, gears, to computers as things of beauty that should react to you and interact with you. So Steve Jobs and his philosophy of design, which pervaded, um, which pervaded Apple and really changed, I think, the course of, of computing. Um, Stuart Brand, who I won't talk about, but uh, Stuart Brand has, uh, has, there's a link to Stuart Brand inside the, uh, inside the page you're looking at. So number one, Steve Jobs and his design ethic. Number two, Bill Gates and his business ethic. So Bill Gates and Steve Jobs share one thing, which is a focus on the user. But Bill Gates, um, his focus was on the mass market and on building things that every day, every kind of person could use, making them extremely open, making them extremely cheap, and making sure that his systems were below and underneath all other people's systems. We'll talk a lot about that business model later, of being under, underneath other systems. For now, really the focus is on the mass market and being very sensitive to what users did. Right from the beginning, Microsoft has been very sensitive to the experience that users have with their product and making sure that each new version gets better and better. Now you can argue with how well they do that, but you can't argue with the fact that they want to do that and that that also created a change. It created a major point of inflection. So Steve Jobs and his design ethic, Bill Gates and his business ethic. The third person I'll point to is a little bit more obscure than the first two, but to my mind no less important in that or in exemplifying the changeover from the expert to the um, uh, to the user-centered system. And that's a guy named Don Norman. Don Norman was a pioneer in this idea that things should be usable. Things should be intuitive. Things should uh, work the way that you expect them to work. The classic example in the Don Norman world is the door that you don't know whether to open or close. You don't know whether to push or pull. You don't know how to make it make the thing work. 
So that's Don Norman and his um, and his usability ethic, and we'll talk more about that in a, in a future le lecture. So what do all three of these guys share? They all exemplify that transition from the expert-centered world, where computer programmers were the experts and they knew exactly what to do, but you, the end user, had to read the book in order to figure it out and issue a lot of uh, very arcane commands, to the world we're in now where it's all about design, it's all about usability, it's all about the flexibility and the responsiveness of the application to the people who are using it. You want to be in my video? Come on. <laughs> These are my two friends. What's your name? My name is Ahmed. Ahmed. And? Fumit. Fumit. Pleased to meet you. Say hello to my classes. Say hi. <laughs>